Hey everyone, Steve here with Class A Surfacing. Today I'm going to do a bit of an intro into section surface. Now there are curve section, uh, sectioning tools, view sectioning tools, but this is a section surface tool. Basically it's a predefined shape that you drag along your um, guidelines or your guide curves. Now these shapes are going to be linear, circular, and conical as well as cubic and I'm going to touch on just a couple of the different shapes. Um, this is an extremely powerful operator. It's singularly one of the most powerful surfacing tools that NX has but it's not really used because people don't understand it. Um, I use it. I use it frequently in fact because of its incredible uh, capabilities and how powerful it is. Now the sectioning surface tool is under the surface workbench or toolbar and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to specify section surface. It's a sweep type. So what this allows you to do is you'll notice type. And I have four different types. Like I said, linear, cubic, conic, and circular. So in this case, I'm just going to go into circular. And this is one of the ones that I use very often is a center point. Okay, this one I use quite, quite frequently. So um, Oh, I'm not. I'm sorry, not center point. I'm saying center radius. So with this is I pick the curve, I pick a spine string, and in this case I have a cubic transition from 15 to 25 running across. So what I'll do a lot of times is on a theoretical, I'll run a tube to get my tangents to do my intersections with. Sometimes this is just a really good way to go about doing it. It uh, gives you something very clean, easy to manage. Um, a visual shape. Uh, sometimes, depending on the client, they actually want to see the tubes that you're using to make your tangencies based off of your clean theoretical. Now, I'm just going to apply that. I'm going to pick this, go here, and you'll notice that I'm making the exact same shape. And on my spine string, I have this little arrow, the direction. If I double click on that, it'll reverse it. And that's what I want to do here. I want to reverse that. So this is a circular type section that's perpendicular to this curve and being dragged along that center guide curve. Okay, so that is the section that they're talking about, section surface. That's a circular section surface. So now I'm going to change this. I'm going to go into linear. And uh, this is another one that I frequently use. It's called um, uh, tangent tangent. So this is like drawing a bitangent line two circles. So in this case, here's my start phase, here's my end phase, here's my spine. And as you can see, I'm getting a linear surface that's perpendicular to this spine curve, straight across from here to here. Per again, perpendicular to that spine all the way up. And it's totally linear because it's telling me it's linear. Um, and this is nice because, again, I can have two free-floating shapes and maybe I just want a tangent surface to bridge those gaps. Now, with that being said, you have several options here for that surface, and this is what that alternate solution is for. If I click on that, you'll see it goes from the bottom to the top. It's just like two circles with a line. It can be tangent across the tops, across the bottoms, bottom to top, uh, top to bottom. So this just allows you to determine which solution you want. Select OK. Now I have my surface. Let me go ahead and hide these. I'm going to go back into my section surface. And then here, I'm going to go into, sorry, not point and angle. I'm going to go back into circular. And you'll see I have several kinds of circular um, uh, functions here. Another one that I use is the two point and radius. I use this one relatively frequently. And this is nice because this allows you to pick two guide curves, a spine string, and you'll notice I get this little error message. This error message is saying, well, half the chord distance. What's happening is the size of the radius that I'm trying to put in, remember I'm putting in a circle, the size of the radius isn't big enough to bridge the gap between these two curves. So I'm just going to change this from uh, cubic to constant. And I'm going to increase this to 100, for instance. And you'll notice that I have a circular surface. Again, that surface is um, 100 millimeters 
It is perpendicular to the spine, touching these two guide curves. Um, now, if I double click on this arrow on that spine, you'll notice it reverses and it brings the other portion of the circle up. So it's again very powerful. It's a predefined shape that the sec in this case the section circular section is being driven between those two sections or uh, guide curves. Now what's really great about this is a lot of times um, when you're surfacing something up really quick you want to throw some ideas out this is a very quick way to do that you don't have to draw additional sketches or curves or whatever to get those uh, really quick um, surfaces that you want. I actually use this function quite frequently. I'm going to apply that. Let me hide you. Now other methods that we have here is you'll see like two-pointed slope, uh, radius angle arc. So they got a little image and description and I can cover all these in other lectures otherwise this lecture would take forever and ever. Um, so if there's something that you want to see specifically out of these I can go into those but I'm just going to talk more about the ones that I use relatively frequently. Now um, I'm going to cancel out of the section. I'm going to make a law extension. Let me go ahead and pick my curve. Pick this and um, yeah let me jerk up the angle a bit hit OK let me go ahead and hide that I'm gonna make another law extension you you and I'm just gonna double click on the spine and reverse it that way I don't have to change angles create a couple of surfaces here and now, now I'm gonna go back into my section surface now with this you'll see that if I go in and use this is another tool that I use frequently and it's a really good tool because what it allows you to do is um, let's see here creates a circular section surface start guide radius angle and slope at start so this is my radius angle arc pick my start pick my face my spine and I get this little error message and what it's asking me for is an angle value so I'm just gonna go 45 and hit enter so what this does is it draws a circular section that's tangent to this face up 45 degrees from this curve and this is a hundred radius so if I come in here and say I want a 500 radius it's a 500 radius now I can reduce that angle but it remains tangent to this face. So if I come in here, say edit parameters, you'll see that that shifted along with that surface. So I'll just come back in here. And increase my angle. There we go. So this is another great way to um, create circular surfaces so what I've done oftentimes is uh, draw my parting line this is a very sim uh, familiar technique to me this is something that I do quite often is I'll draw a, uh, um, a surface that needs to control for, for my die line what I need especially on plastic parts and then um, if I have some vertical walls they're not supposed to be vertical maybe a little shape I just use a circular section like this and draw that surface in really quick and easy it does a great job uh, let's go back into section surface so that's that radius angle arc and again you can highlight shows you what it does gives you a little description and you can work off of that now uh, just to talk about conic briefly you'll notice that I have several conic types you have a uh, shoulder so this is asking for a shoulder curve creates a conic section between start guide shoulder curve and end guide and two slopes now this one the row value takes the place of a shoulder curve. The shoulder curve is somewhere along the <clears throat> surface that you're generating. In this case, I'm going to just use an actual row value. So here's my start. Here's my end. Start slope. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. This is asking for a curve. I want a. Uh, um, 
just by faces. That's what I wanted. I apologize. I, I was messing with this a little earlier. Um, you can pick a curve. Like in this case, if I come down here, I can pick this curve. And I can come over here and pick this curve for my slope control. Basically, um, the angle at which the conic is going to come into. And pick my spine. And it's going to generate it for me. It's In this case, it's going to give me this uh, very similar result that I have um, by picking this actual surface by going by faces. It's going to give me the same basic result, okay, because these are linear surfaces. There's no odd uh, shapes to them. They're perfectly linear. And then your row value here determines how much peak that you have. Um, this is something that we need to discuss deeply in another lecture, but from 0 0.001 to 0 0.499, it's an ellipse. 0.5 is a parabola. 0.501 um, or point, anything greater than 0 0.5, 0 0.501, I say, to 0.999 is going to give you a hyperbola. So here, if I flatten this out a little bit, you'll see it comes down a bit. Or if I increase it gives you a bit more of a peak okay so this is your uh, conic type it's going to give you the ability to make conical surfaces in any way that you can draw a conic curve those methods will relate here to your conic surfaces so I may have five curves that I need to drive a conic through that's something that's uh, you'll see quite frequently in aerospace where uh, the aerospace uh, division or group in arrow, they determine what curves they want a conic to be driven through, and then you just draw the five curves and you make the surface directly through those five curves. So there's no guessing as to the shape. They know exactly what the shape is going to be. Um, so that's that's why you have so many of these. In the styling world, I do use conics quite frequently. Uh, they're really great to sort of mimic a uh, um, a blend, a, a true um, uh, like a face blend or a curvature. It may not mathematically be truly curvature or have the acceleration of G3, but in a lot of ways it'll mimic that. And it gives you, a, it's supposed to give you a relatively simple shape. So, you know, if I go in here and I go to analysis and I go over to pick my surface and I want to look at Look at eye outlines. You can see, let me go here, I get a smooth transition from one to the other. Now these highlight lines are going to show um, almost like a little kink because again it's just a true tangency mathematically. It's not a G2 condition. But if I go into reflection, You can see I have a pretty smooth there are, transition as well. And again, for interior parts, things of that nature, this kind of surface is nice. It's a relatively simple surface. So I'll pick my surface and I'll say show poles. And as you can see, it gives me a true conical shape. Very simple, clean, show knots. Not a, not a ton of them. But again, I'm dealing with uh, you know multiple surfaces and the math and so on. So these are going to um, it's going to impose its math onto the next surface. So that's kind of what we have here. Now these again these section surfaces. There's dozens of them. There's all sorts of ways you can create. The section is predefined whether it's circular, linear, conical, or if, um, uh, cubic. Cubic we'll get into. That's another lecture. Great tool. Love it. Um, and like I said, I do use section surfaces quite often. I don't see enough people using them. They're very powerful tools. It's unfortunate because you can achieve a lot using these cur or these uh, these uh, section-based tools uh, by not having to draw a lot of extra or redundant geometry. So that's uh, my quick little spiel, as quick as I can make it, on section surface. I hope you liked the video. If you do, please like it, share it with your friends, and if you like my channel, please subscribe. Again, thanks.